Hello everyone, I'm Andy Liu from Future Consideration, and today I'm with my good buddy, Keith Fries, also from Future Consideration, for our early 2019 NHL mock draft. But this time, it won't be a simple prediction of what will happen. Using Vegas odds, we will each take turn and pick the player we think would be the best for the team selecting. Remember, this is just our opinion. So I would love to see your mock draft if you were each team GM in the comments below. Without waiting any longer, let's pass to Keith, who will make the first overall selection for the Colorado Avalanche. With the first overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Colorado Avalanche, and this is actually the Ottawa Senators pick, take Jack Hughes from the National Development Program. And Jack Hughes is everything that he's built to be with being a number one prospect. He's fast, he's got incredible hands, and he thinks the game at a very fast and high level. The one thing I will say about this pick is, and I'm going to actually give credit here to Ottawa, is that I don't think they're going to end up with the worst record in the NHL. Uh, but this is obviously the most safe pick to make here, Jack Hughes. Yeah, at this point, uh, Jack Hughes just seems to be uh, on another step from any other prospect. There is Keiko Keiko, that is uh, really good in the Liga. But uh, Jack Hughes just uh, destroy every tournament he is in and every league. He's just amazing and he makes uh, everyone around him just so much better. Yeah, one quick thing I forgot to mention about Jack Hughes was last year he averaged literally two points per game. I mean, that's not like a 1.97 points per game. I mean, literally exactly two points per game which is insane from any player, but uh, to hit that total every night, that's pretty damn impressive. And now with the second overall pick, the Detroit Red Wings select from TPS in the Liga, Kepo Keiko. The Finland winger is a tremendous skater, stick handler and passer, and shooter. With his big frame, he already wins most of his physical battle in the Liga. He has no real weakness. He is having an historic start to the season. It's not a stretch of the imag imagination to think it could be Sasha Barkov draft year production. Detroit might be in lack of defensemen, but with a franchise winger left like Kepo Keiko on the board, there is no other choice than picking. Imagine having Kepo Keiko and Zadzina on the right wing and needing to figure out who to put on your second line. That's a problem I would want as the Detroit coach. With a third overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Vancouver Canucks select Philip Broberg, a defenseman from Sweden. And the thing about Broberg, and I'll mention this very quick, is that simply based on his numbers that I looked at from his career standpoint, stat standpoint, before the season started, I already had him as a grade A prospect. And I hadn't seen any of his footage at that point. And then again, I tuned into the Lincoln Gretzky Cup this year and he was so dominant in that tournament, both as a two-way defenseman, and he also showed flashes of a little bit of offensive touch by jumping into the play, both as a really good playmaker and a good sniper. I think the one thing that's going to separate Philip Broberg from the rest of this class is how well and how fast he skates for his flies. Additionally, to that end, I think there is a certain trend right now because of Rasmus Dahlin that Swedish defensemen are a premium, and especially going back to last draft two with Adam Bokvist. So it's not a stretch for me to see the Canuck take a Swedish prospect here, knowing that they like their Swedish prospects anyway. And the best way to build up from the ground up is from the back end, and I think this is the best way for them to go. Again, right here, number three, they take Philip Rober. With the fourth overall pick, the Montreal Canadiens selects from the US NTDP team Alex Turka. The American center is a dynamic two-way forward with a great speed and some great ends. He is one of the most complete players of the draft and he is very responsible defensively. He's probably the fastest skater of the draft after Alex Newell. He has a very high ceiling. With already two elite centers in this system, with Kotki Anyami and Suzuki, they could go with Boran Barron to help their weakness at defense. But I'm a big fan of selecting the best player available, and that would be Turcotte in my opinion. 
Montreal would be stacked on center. With the fourth overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the New York Rangers select Vasily Budkovsky from Russia. And the thing that I really like about Podkolzin's game is that he's just an absolute game changer. He's the kind of player where he says, give me the keys, I'll drive the car, everybody just follow my lead. And he is incredibly fast. His separation speed is remarkable. And he, he has such good puck control with how fast he moves. Uh, he finished the Helenka Kretzky Cup tournament with uh, tying uh, 2020 prospect Alexis Lafreniere with the most points in the tournament with 11, but he had two hat tricks in that uh, span, finishing with eight goals, eight goals total. And the thing about Pod Colson's game is, is that he is going to lead most power plays in the NHL because he has this sort of Alexander Ovechkin type quality where he can just post up at his one spot, which is just outside the faceoff circle, and he lets the puck find him. He doesn't go looking for it. So the moment that it comes to him, his one-time shot is a booming shot. It's incredible. It has power. It has accuracy. And honestly, for him to be here at five, I'm a little surprised, and I think he could even go higher. But knowing that the Rangers did take Kravtsov last year with the ninth overall pick, it makes sense that they might take another Russian as well. So again, with the fifth overall pick, Vasily Podkolzin. With the sixth pick, the New York Islander selects from Lethbridge in the WHL Dylan Cousin. At this point, they could select any of Cousin, Dak, or Newark, and I would be perfectly fine with it. But Cousin just fits perfectly the Islanders. He's an excellent skater and one, and one of the fastest of the draft. The Canadian center has a great shot and some, pass, some great passing abilities that allows him to be pretty versatile offensively. He is also great defensively and gets involved in physical battle. He is very dynamic and would fit perfectly with the new group of Prospect and Brooklyn. Add Cousin to the Borzal, Wallstrom, Dobson, Sorokin, Bo Bellows, Wild and Iskakov and the Islanders are starting to look good for the future. With the seventh overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Carolina Hurricanes select Kirby Dock from the WHL Saskatoon Blue. For my money, now we just took Dylan Cousins off the board, but from again, my money, Kirby Dock is the best Canadian prospect in this draft. The WHL is a very heavy draft this year and it has a lot of good prospects in it. We're going to see Bowen Byron coming up soon. But again, for my money, I still think Kirby Dock is the best Canadian prospect. And here's why, because you can light him up down center. You can also put him on the wing and he's effective for both positions. He's an effective playmaker and he can really separate from the pack when he has his separation speed going because he has a really big first step. And more so than that, He's really, really good with his edges. He can go to his toes, back to his heels, and back to his toes all in one fluid motion. And he has really good control with his hands, especially on his backhand. So, and he also has this natural ability to just finish both as a scorer or a playmaker, meaning he has a high compete level. He's also a big boy. I mean, he's 6'3", 6'4", and sometimes uh, out of a player like that, who has the offensive skill set he has. You may not see much physicality out of a player like that, but Kirby Dock showed in the Lincoln Gretzky Cup tournament that he does have some physicality to his game. He can throw his weight around. And I think by the time the draft comes around, you're gonna hear his name compared a lot with a player like Jeff Carter, because they do have very similar styles of game. And if you just match up the tapes, you will find a lot of similarities. But again, right here with the seventh overall pick to really help the Carolina Hurricanes keep pushing and making great, great picks within the last couple of years to go along with Andre Svechnikov on a line that should be incredibly dynamic, Kirby Doc from the Saskatoon Blades. And for a six foot four center, and normally we don't think there is a lot of potential, but it's incredible just to see how good uh, Dak is offensively. He's, he has some incredible ends. I've never seen that for a six foot four center. And his vision, his passing abilities are just incredible. He's pretty versatile. He has a good shot. I would want to see him shoot a bit, a bit more. He tends to go for the pass a bit too much. 
but uh, that's pretty easy to do. You just need to shoot a bit more and uh, the goals will come. And in my money is also uh, the best Canadian. With the eighth overall selection, the Arizona Coyote selects from Victoria and the BCHL Alex New. The Canadian center is a pure talent. His set of skill is incredible and he got a ridiculous offensive potential. He is fast, he has slick hands, and his vision is really good. Unfortunately, he did not have the chance to display his talent a lot, a lot to fans because he was playing last season in a lesser known league and he was cut from the Linka Gretzky. But he did everything he could in the BCHL, finishing with 66 points in 45 games. It's now common to see him go end-to-end and dangle everybody in his way. He could become the next number one center for Arizona. Not only is he the best player available, in my opinion, he is also the best fit for the talented Coyotes team. With the ninth overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Buffalo Sabres select Simon Holstrom from the FHL. Now, here's my thing with Simon Holstrom. Just based on the numbers that I ran before the season started, I had Simon Holstrom ranked as a grade A prospect, and more so than that, I'll be incredibly transparent with you, Andy. I had him as my fourth ranked overall prospect in this draft. But from what I've seen of his game, from what the prospects that I've talked to have told me, he is an absolute surefire top 10 pick. And I think the Buffalo Sabres are really going to benefit from his style because he is an up-tempo skater. He is almost an effortless skater, if I could be quite honest with you. And I think that he has the ability both as a scorer and a playmaker. I don't think he's totally defined his game both on that end of the puck yet, uh, what you would slot him in as being a sniper or a playmaker, but I think he's that kind of versatile, all situation type player. Could potentially run a second power play line, maybe even uh, run a penalty kill as well. But uh, either way, I still think Holmstrom is a great pick here for the Sabres at number nine. So again, with that pick, Simon Holmstrom. With the 10th overall pick, the New Jersey Devils selects from Vancouver in the WHL, Bowen Barron. The Canadian is, in my opinion, the best defenseman of the draft, and he will solve a lot of problems in New Jersey. He is a great 2 witty with an high hockey IQ. His defensive game is near perfect, and he is also able to join the offense on the rush or to control the play with his good vision in the offensive zone. His decision making is excellent and he never seems to make errors. He is also super poised in, at all times. Him and Ty Smith would fit nicely too on the first pairing for the Devils. With the 11th overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Minnesota Wilds select Anthony Honka from Finland and the Liga. And the one thing about Anthony Honka that's going to stand out from the rest of the defensive class in this draft is that he's an offensive defenseman, a pure offensive defenseman, great puck mover from his own end. He can make the long stretch pass effortlessly. He really has no problem with that. In fact, his skating to bring the puck up ice is also very flawless. He's got this ability to dance with defenders that's pretty easy as well. And because he's an offensive defenseman, he's going to be a hot commodity often and early in most uh, draft boards. So. To see him here at 11 is reasonable. I don't think he's, uh, I think he's a bubble top 10 guy. So you can have him in the top 10. You could have him in the top 15. Um, I think this is a good spot for him. It's a good situation as well. The Wild really know how to use their defense. And they know how to groom them and get the best out of them. And they get a great player right here with Anthony Hunk at, at 11. With the 12th overall pick of the draft, the Florida Panther selects from Manem in the DEL Moritz Seeder. The German defenseman is a rising prospect on most boards with, with his great progression during the summer. Playing with men in, German, in the German Pro League, Moritz looks comfortable in all aspects of his game in, and he has a great powerful stride. He loves to join the rush. His play with the puck is already very good and is able to create plays with his skating, vision and great shot. The Panthers could have a go with forward Piton Krebs or Trevor Zegras, but with so much talent already in front, they will gladly accept Cedar.
uh, like I mentioned the last time we did these videos, I am very big on my German burn, German born prospects, but here with Marit Sider, he is a legit first round prospect. No doubt about it. Regardless if he was born in Russia or Sweden, Finland, U S Canada, it doesn't matter. He's a legit first round prospect. With the 13th overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Colorado Avalanche select Trevor Zegras from the National Team Development Program, and they get an absolute steal right here. And if if Turcotte wasn't in this draft, or Hughes wasn't in this draft, uh, for my money, Zegras would be the number one pick from the U.S. National Development Program. He has the natural ability to be slippery while he's skating, so he can avoid contact while he's still pushing the puck. More so than that, he's got this really great ice vision and ability to process the game like he's playing a game of chess. He just sees the game like it's a, you know, like a board in front of him, and he knows how to move his pieces, and he's very calculated. He knows where he's going to go before he makes his move. I guarantee it, when teams sit down and interview this kid, they're going to walk away loving him. And I think this is a great pick right here for the Colorado Avalanche as well, especially, let's just say hypothetically, that they end up doing, they end up do getting the first overall pick via Ottawa. Well, now they've got Jack Hughes and they've got Trevor Seacrest, two guys that absolutely dominate the current U.S. national development, the U18 program. And those two feed off each other so well. They run separate lines sometimes, but even when they play together, it's phenomenal. So this would be an amazing situation for Colorado to be in, honestly, with right here with 13th pick take Trevor Seacrest. With the 14th overall pick, the Chicago Blackhawks selects from Kootenay in the WHL, Peyton Krebs. The Canadian is a smart two-way center. His hockey IQ is amazing, and he always makes smart decisions on the ice. He is not the fastest or best skater, but his feet are always moving. His motor is incredible. He also has a very good vision and he always set up his teammate for scoring chances. His game looks a lot like Jonathan Tate's. He's definitely the best player available at this point and with good prospect on the back end, he fits the need on the team too. I think he deserves to be a top 10 pick, so as a up fan, I would be extremely happy with him. With the 15th overall pick in the 2019 NHL draft, and the last pick for our purposes here, the Dallas Stars select Maxim Kajdovich from Slovakia, and he's actually kind of a journeyman, really, and that's the most important thing about his game that I think is uh, really drives home how successful he is. He dominated the Czech East 16 League as a 14-year-old. Then he went on to play in the Allspenskin J18 as well as the Super Elite League uh, last year as a 15-year-old, and he absolutely dominated that. And now he's playing with the Quebec Junior League. And I think uh, just based on the game and how he's uh, able to play, you know, on various types of ranks against various types of opponents, that means that he just knows how to process the game. He knows how to play the game against all situations. So he's not uh, a, a risky pick. He's a very, very safe pick. In fact, to me, I think Kajkovic is that kind of guy that can be a game changer. He can be a, a wow kind of guy. I think his skill level is very conducive to where the NFL is going. And uh, it also fits the style that the Dallas Stars play. I mean, that's another thing, too. You have to look at who's making the pick and what their needs are, but not necessarily their needs, but also, you know, how they use their prospects and what kind of prospects they've drafted in the past that play similar. And I think he just fits their system, and I think it's a good situation for them. So, again, right here with the 15th pick, I will have the Dallas Stars taking Maxine Kontrovich. Thanks. Were there any prospects you were surprised that didn't get drafted in the top 15? Well, in a couple of my early projections, I thought that Cole Caulfield could end up going in the top 10. He's another prospect from the National Team Development Program that looks like he could be incredibly dynamic on the offensive side of the puck. He's very undersized at about 5'8", but I don't think that's a problem because he has proved that size really doesn't matter. Um, I mean, he can finish in all situations, and he's got a, a wide range of weapons in his arsenal. He's not just a one versus. He's not a one type of shooter. He doesn't just have a wrist shot. I mean, he can do 
anything that you'd want him to do in terms of shooting the puck. So I'm kind of surprised he didn't show up here. Maybe the Dallas Stars would also take him too. But uh, there's a couple defensemen also that were in my uh, top 15 that didn't end up here, like Nico Kokinen or Tobias Bjornfoot. Uh, but I will uh, give one shout out here, and I don't think he's going to end up being in the top 15, certainly. Uh, and he might end up actually going on day two. Uh, if I had to pick one goaltender to sneak into the first round here, I would say Dustin Wolf from the Everett Silver Tips in the WHL. Uh, he's got a little bit of Jonathan Quick in him, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, he's got this ability to process the game, really good vision through traffic. He practices the new age head trajectory all the time. Uh, the one thing I will say, too, that I really like about Dustin Wolf's game is that he's got an active stick. And the one thing that he was able to do with that was that he was able to translate some of those into four assists last year with the WHL Silver Tips. Personally, I would say uh, maybe Raphael Lavoie and, Nick Suzuki and Ryan Suzuki, both excellent prospects that could definitely go uh, in the top 10 come June. Uh, Raphael Lavoie uh, will have a very smooth transition to the NHL with Ryan Suzuki. I'm just uh, always amazed with his passing abilities. His vision is incredible. The puck doesn't even have the time to hit a stick that it already is going back to another teammate. It's it's incredible how, how easy he can make passes, beautiful passes everywhere, such a pass long range pass or just a drop pass anything Ryan Suzuki is able to do it passing wise and uh, I think he could be selected easily in the top 15. Remember how earlier I was saying that Julius Honka was taken at the 14th overall pick and that Anthony Honka has a chance to beat out his brother at 11? Well I think Ryan Suzuki as a player does have a better uh, career resume and he looks like he could be a better prospect than his older brother Nick but Nick was taken at 13th of all just a couple of years ago and this draft is incredibly stacked so uh, he's uh, Ryan Suzuki for not being in our top 15 here um, it doesn't mean that he's not the better prospect between him and his brother is what I'm saying just because he wasn't drafted before his brother um, and I think that he is an incredible player as well and uh, he was really really notable at the Holinka Gretzky Cup but that's one of the players that and his number kept coming up a lot that I you know had made a remark about or some kind of comment about um, so I do think that Ryan Kazuki is a legit first rounder absolutely no doubt about it if he was there on day two there's something wrong with the general managers in the NHL because a player like that shouldn't be there on day two um, should he be there in the top 15? We didn't think so, but maybe. Maybe he is. I don't know. We'll find out. But, Andy, this was awesome. Thank you again for having me, buddy, and I always appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing. Everybody loves your channel. It's a great channel, and you provide so much great information for us as fans and people that just love drafting or the game of hockey or the NHL product in general. So keep doing your thing. Great job. And I wish you more continued success. Thanks for always having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, you're a good man. So keep doing what you're doing. Good things will come to you. And I, I firmly believe that. And I know it in my heart of hearts. So thank you again for having me, Andy. Well, thanks again, Keith, for joining me today. It was super fun. And I'm looking forward to doing another mock draft come June. You can check Keith out on Twitter with his handle at KeithFries and on futureconsideration.com where you will be able to find his articles. Thank you everyone for watching and I'm looking forward to see your personal mock draft in the comments below. Subscribe if you want to see more NHL draft related videos and click here if you want to see my scouting report on 2019 to Expo. I'll see you for the next one. Here now, here I come. You can't hide Ready or not